Peace be with you. For this morning's assembly, we need to go on location. Good morning, Rowledge. Don't adjust your sets, this isn't country file. I'm here, live on location, in a field, to tell you about the theme of today's assembly. I'm gonna to talk to you about harvest in Tanzania. Now here in the UK, I'm sure you can see farming can be really challenging. It's very wet and windy today, and we're experiencing in the UK much longer, drier summers and wetter winters with farm flooding. But in Tanzania, it can be even more challenging still. Now I want you to pause me and have a think. If you were a Tanzanian farmer, what would your biggest challenges be? Right, I wonder if you managed to guess that it's much hotter in Tanzania not giving them enough water and they can have a whole um, field that can be completely ruined. The other thing is, in the UK, we've got some very fancy farming equipment, some really cool combine harvesters, but in Tanzania they don't have those. Finally, often pests can completely ruin crops and we have some sort of very uh, economically friendly sprays that we can spray over our crops to stop the pests from damaging them. So there are some real challenges. Now, in the UK, our number one crop that we grow is something that's going to be grown in this field behind me. I spoke to the farmer yesterday, it's wheat. Number two is my favourite, is the potato. We grow five and a half million tonnes of potatoes in the UK every single year. That would cover 120,000 football pitches. That's crazy, even more than the football teams in the Premier League. And the third thing that we grow is we don't really grow this one, we raise sheep. We've got 90 different breeds in the UK and they give us a whole host of things ranging from sheep's milk to cheese, wool, you can use it in soap and finally my favourite, Sunday lunch. Now in Tanzania 70% of the population are farmers which that's a lot of people who at this time of year right now will be getting ready to harvest their crops. I'm going to take you back inside to tell you all about the crops that they do actually grow. Because here in the UK, we mainly do a mixture of what's called arable and pastoral farming. And pastoral is where we raise cattle because we've got lovely green fields where they can nibble on the lovely grass. Arable farming is where you grow just crops. So I want you to have a think. What do you think the top crops could be that are grown in Tanzania? So in our country at this time of the year, as I explained, we're often harvesting the potato, or maybe in your gardens at home, are you harvesting things like onions and apples and pears? But in Tanzania, there are six products that they produce a lot of. And the average farmer has got um, quite a small farm, about the size of seven football pitches. So it's not huge. One of the things they grow is cotton. I've got a t-shirt here. They also grow something I really like actually that lots of you will have and that's, can you see what it is? It's a cashew nut. That's one of their main things that they grow. Something we all like to have in the staff room, some coffee. Tea. But the number one thing that they're really big producers of is something I'm gonna to have to reach on the floor for this actually. It's really heavy. Oh. It's something called sisal. And we often make things like rugs or bags or carpets out of sisal. And that's really, really a big crop that they grow and then turn it into something that looks like a rug. Here's some harvesting action in Tanzania right now. All this talk of farming is making me think of my favourite storybook what the ladybird heard. I'm going to hand over to someone who's much better at reading it than I am. What the ladybird heard. Once upon a time lived a fat red hen, a duck in a pond and a goose in a pen. A woolly sheep, a dairy dog, a handsome horse and a dainty dog. A cat that meowed, and a cat that purred, and a, prize and a fine prize cow, and a ladybird. A 
and the cow said moo and the, and the hen said cluck. Hiss said the goose and quack said the duck. Nay said the horse, oink said the hog. Bear said the sheep and woof said the dog. Well, one cat meowed while the other purred. And the ladybird never said a word. But the ladybird saw and the ladybird heard. She saw two men in a big black van with a map and a key and a cunning plan. And she heard them whisper, this is how we're going to steal the fine prize cow. Open the gate, tap dead of night, pass the horse and then turn right. Round the duck pond, pass the hog, be careful not to wake the dog. Le left tap past the sheep, then straight ahead and through the door of the prize cow shed. And and the lady and the ladybird, spotty and the and the little spotty ladybird, who before never said a word, told the animals, "This is how the two thieves are planning to steal steal the cow. They'll open the gate at dead of night, pass the horse, and then turn right round the duck pond, pass the hog. Be careful not to wake the dog. Left, pass the sheep." straight ahead and through the door of the prize cow shed. And the cow said moo and the hen said cluck. Hiss said the goose and quack said the duck. Nay said the horse, wink said the dog, pear said the sheep and woof said the dog. And both cats began to meow. We can't let them steal the fine prize cow. But the ladybird had a good idea. She whispered into each animal's ear. <laughs> At dead of night, two bad men, Heffily Hugh and Lanky Len, open the gate while the farmer sleeps and tiptoe into the farmer's creek. Then the goose said nay with all her might and Len said that's the horse then turn right. And the dainty dog began to quack. The duck, the duck said Hugh we're right on track. Oink said the cat. There goes the hog, be careful not to wake the dog. Bear, said the fat red hen. The sheep were nearly there, said Lem. Then the duck pot, then the duck on the pond said moo. Two more steps to go, said Hugh. And they all both stepped into the duck pond. Splosh! And the farmer woke and said, Golly gosh! And they called the cops and they came, Nino, Nino! And they threw the thieves into the panda car. Did you know every single one of us is a farmer? We all have our own harvest. The more we put into our lives, the kinder we are, the more respectful we are, the better the harvest we will have, the more we will get out of life and the more happiness will spread around. So I want you to think about what you're going to harvest in the next few days, weeks, and this year. Put your hands together, please. Close your eyes and we'll say a little prayer. 
Dear God, please help us to think of everybody around the world as they prepare for the busiest time of the year. Help us to think of the farmers in Tanzania and please make sure that they have a bumper crop, everything they need to keep their families safe, alive and well this year. In Jesus' name, Amen.